I keep thinking about this planet and something that somebody said who had seen a photograph of this planet uh, 400 million miles away, look back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a little blue dot. <laughs> so I want to put that in perspective because I'm the kind of guy that thinks the natural world is important to humans. And uh, I can't help seeing the my mind being a little confused because I've also lived with two tribes of people here on this earth, one in Africa, the Kalahari Bushmen, and one in the Amazon, the YY. They don't even know that we exist, much less that Ted exists. And here are all these minds that are working on some of the big problems here on the earth. So it, it's very humbling. I, uh, I went to a college in Indiana and I caught a disease. Some of you may have caught the same disease. My disease was that nobody told me what I couldn't do. <laughs> so I pushed off to Africa. I went to the Amazon, did the studies on the Harp Eagle, but this is what happened. I don't get too concerned about what's going on because I was charged by 200 elephants led by an irate female. <laughs> I also sat in a tree 200 feet high in the Amazon and listened to the sounds of the animals in the Amazon. When you've done that, you don't get too concerned about everything. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, anyway, I, uh, I am concerned about how we treat this earth. I've been out there, I've seen it, I've lived it, and I'm concerned. And so I want to talk a little bit today about some of the problems and maybe some of the solutions. But uh, yeah, I, uh, after being at that college, I, and, and I did get to travel all over the place, I uh, started thinking, what are these misconceptions? Why is it that we have so much min misinformation about the natural world. So I want to talk with that a little bit today. But first, I want to explain to you how we all need self-esteem. And I want to explain to you <laughs> how I got some self-esteem. It wasn't only from my family who are here tonight. <laughs> but I got self-esteem because I was going down a river in, in Ohio filming for Wild Kingdom. And all of a sudden, these three very genuine you know who we call the salt of the earth type people. They were fishermen. They came running up the bank. One of the guys had a big smile on his face. He stuck his hand out and said, well, I'll be a son of a gunner if it isn't the guy from Kingdom Come. <laughs> I was doing a Wild Kingdom show there. And so he got a little confused, but I never said anything to him after that. But I've been able to do just about everything after that, including talking at Ted for crying out loud. But it did open up my mind to maybe I could have an effect on the outcome of our respect for the natural world. Anyway, the, uh, the real problem was that uh, I became, I was lecturing all over the place talking about animal behavior. Then it suddenly dawned on me one day, there's something else to talk about that's not being talked about and that is why the natural world is important to human welfare. That's being left out. You won't see that in one zoological park, conservation organizations. We don't talk about that. So I started defining what is it that we need to know. And I want to give you a, a real quick discussion of that. Uh, there are things called the, the primary natural laws the laws of nature that allow life to be on this earth. You know, we study some of that in university, but we never pay a whole lot of attention to it. We don't talk about it. We have words that don't mean anything. We use words, we confuse information with education. I talk about information when you, which we're all loaded with, by the way, because you gotta have information to get a job. But scientists generally are not too swift at communication. Big difference between education and information. Information is when you sit on a hot stove the first time, comes up right through your backside. Education is when you won't sit on it the second time. <laughs> now, <laughs> we have to link, start linking education with uh, 
you know, how it benefits we humans. All right, there's another couple of problems with the word conservation. There's a problem with that. There's a problem with the word environment. What do those words mean? I think I call those uh, management terms or political terms. They're not communication terms. The big communication term is in the world of the laws of nature. When you talk about their physical, chemical, and biological laws that are not, they're really not controversial. Instead of overpopulation, which is a political term, doesn't mean anything, we call it overcrowding. And that makes sense. That's a communication term. So ladies and gentlemen, we have to learn how to do all this. And I, I don't really want to go into all the details about the language, but there are lots of misconceptions out there. For example, uh, the media has us by the ear running around trying to make us think that animals are dangerous. You know, every story about an animal they play because we humans are programmed genetically to be horrified by the idea of being bitten or clawed. So they, they dwell on that. Uh, I don't talk about animals being dangerous. I think animals ought to have respect and we, should, we have, they have rights, but we have to be able to bring them into captivity. We don't want to face it, folks, but in the wild, the way nature works, animals are fighting, killing, and eating each other. It's, they're not frolicking, playing around, holding hands. We have to start looking at reality instead of fantasy because we have programmed ourselves genetically with fantasy. We're programming ourselves. Hollywood, the internet, all this, a lot of things on television, they're fantasy. So how in the world can we get this thing right? Coming down to it, the basic laws of nature, but there's also a mission of science, and that is to learn how life is sustained on the planet. That's the most important thing we could do. But I got another one for you. <laughs> I want to talk and explain to you, I think we've, our level of, aware, of awareness has evolved to the point where we can talk about the mission of humanity. Have you ever heard anybody talk about that? I think the mission of humanity is to learn who, what, why, and where we are, because the more we know about ourselves, the less uh, inferiority complex we'll have, and the less we're going to kill each other over who we should listen to that'll take, to, take care of us in the afterlife. <laughs> the other... <laughs> the, <laughs> the other mission of humanity is very obvious, is to create a quality of life for everybody on this planet. And you talk about tipping points, it happens with people in, in the animal world. It's a disaster when you get too many, when the habitat can't support the species. It's called the carrying capacity. The lemmings march into the ocean looking for new territory. So that's a real problem, but quality of life is something that we can't forget. The final analysis, this is what I want to leave you with. We have to think, if you know the basic laws of nature that support life on this planet, you got to start thinking about the future. If I wore a sandwich board on myself in New York City and talked about this, they'd probably run me out of the city. But I hope you'll bear with me. Once you know how this earth works, we, in the future, we're going to have to limit 50% of this globe, and I'm very serious about this, to pouring concrete on 50% of it. But once you go over 50% of this planet, we're in trouble, it's downhill from then on. We're gonna to have to start treating this planet like every farmer knows. Every farmer knows you have to rotate your pastures and your cropland. Instead of destroying our natural resources on this planet, we're gonna to have to start rotating things like half of the Amazon. We're gonna to have to utilize to the best of our intelligence half of that, but the other half, we got to let that stay there for about 400 years to regrow after we've exploited the resources. We're going to have to do what we call rotation of areas, and we've got to keep wildlife rotated also in different places. And uh, I hate to tell you this, I think that Los Angeles is okay, but we're going to have to start moving our cities away from rivers. We can't, have a, we can't afford to have pollution going into the oceans. Uh, they're dead zones right now because the first law of nature is that the phytoplankton 
is activated by the sun and it produces a lot of our oxygen. And people don't even understand, unfortunately, because we're not communicating with the public. So ladies and gentlemen, before something happens to us, we better start communicating and we better learn how to talk and be a spokesperson for the natural world. Everybody here can be a spokesperson. I think that's one of the most important things. So let's uh, grow up, let's change our tune, and let, maybe let's use a tipping point to make people around this world realize that we have a unique home here and we gotta take care of it. <laughs>